Hey everybody, Chris. And well, that's interesting. So today in our, our video, we're going to cover what happens when you have an issue like that, when your end stops or your stop switches aren't working correctly, where they are, what they look like, how to inspect them, how to tell on the controller if they are making contact, and then also how to adjust them. So let's come on, come on over to the laser and let's go through some of the issues and where all these pieces are so that you as an end user can easily adjust them. So there are many reasons why the end stop switches could fail, whether it be you just cleaned it and accidentally grabbed one of the arms that are used to trigger the switch, uh, you've moved one of the arms that are supposed to hit the switch to uh, let it know it's in position, or maybe the switch has actually failed on its own. Um, there are a couple different reasons, like I said, but we're going to go through it and show you what to look for. Now, what I want to do first is I want to go in here and I'm going to really mimic and show you uh, what happens when it doesn't work correctly. Um, the machine is actually moving uh, to hit some switches and you can see right here there is a metal tab. Let me see if I can zoom in real quick for you. This little switch right here is a limit switch. And this arm right here is what's going to trigger this switch. And it's going to move to the back and once it hits it, it's going to let the controller know that it has reached its limit and it can't go any further. Now, what happens is either when we clean it, a lot of times people will hook their microfiber towel on this and rip it right off um, while cleaning or even just uh, through vibration and stuff, this little mechanism or this arm here will move just enough so that it's not making contact. But if we move this out of the way, it will not hit this switch. And that's when we have a problem because it's looking for the switch when it homes and when it's moving around lasering. So if I go to my menu and I go to access reset, and then I'm going to do the XY. So it's, it's looking for that switch can't find it, bounces around, it knows that it should have found it already. So it stops and now it will move slowly. If we look, it is moving slowly because it's not quite sure what position it's in. So what I'm going to do is actually show you, I'm gonna shut the machine off and I'm gonna show you manually when I push this, how this is supposed to operate. So you can see that that is clicking the switch. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that it is actually triggering the switch. We need to make sure both on the controller using our LED lights or on our screen that it is making contact and electronically telling the machine and the controller that it is at its limit. But there are adjustments there are adjustments on this arm that triggers it, and there's also adjustments down below so that you can slide this back and forth uh, to put it into a better position to trigger it as it should be triggered. Now, not only is there one over here on your right side door in the back, but there is another one. right here. And this one is triggering correctly. You can actually hear it when they trigger correctly. And that is a correct mating of the, the trigger and the switch. And that's what we're going to look for and adjust to on the other one. Alright, real quick I'm going to show you how a successful homing sequence works or a trigger of the end stop. Uh, I'm gonna hit the access reset. You're gonna see it touch and trigger the end stop and then back off a little bit. 
Now that's successful. It registered, everything is touching correctly, and that's what it should look like. Now to test these, what I recommend is moving our laser to a position where it's easy to access uh, our end, step, end switch over here. And then obviously opening the door here, we can access and trigger this one. Uh, so we wanna make sure that these are functioning properly because if they're not functioning properly when we press them, then there's no point in trying to adjust anything. We have a failed switch. Uh, maybe you cleaned it and got it wet. Uh, maybe a wire became disconnected or we just have a failed switch. And the Z, when it comes down, it's going to trigger that switch and then you should get a notification that the limit switch was triggered. So what we want to do to check all of these limit switches, if we're having issues like um, when we first started the video where it's bouncing up against the wall and grinding, we're going to go to the, the menu and then we're going to go into diagnostics. Now you can see that the bottom limit is triggered. Now if I move my laser head to the front so that I can press on this switch, I should be able to see that the limit switch is making, and as long as this is working, then we know, you know, if, if it fails when you start it up or fails at any point in time, but we do get a, a light when we press on the button, that means our arm that triggers the switch is not making contact, and it just needs to be adjusted. If I go over here and I press this one, we can see that is working fine as well. So what we're going to do is also take a look at our controller and the controller should mimic and there is a diagram underneath to let you know what the LEDs stand for. So we have limit X, limit Y, limit Z, and those are all listed there. And we can, while I click it, you can see that light up. So we wanna make sure not only is it lighting up on our control panel, but we can double check and make sure it is lighting up on the actual controller itself. Let's say for instance, you are getting noise out of the button. It sounds like it is making contact, but we have zero lights on our controller. And also on, you can tell that we are not making any contact. Uh, our LED lights are no longer coming on when we hit our, our switch button. So one thing that we're gonna check is the wiring behind it. So we're gonna look at the switch itself and we're going to make sure that those wires are intact and they are pushed all the way in. And then you can do the same on the other side as well. Another thing to check is at the limit switch plug here. If we look at this, this is loose. And now if I push it in and seat it all the way down, now it's working again. So there are a couple different places we can check to see uh, where the issue might be. But the most common one is we were cleaning, this got knocked out of the way and it's no longer hitting our switch. And that's a quick and easy fix. You're going to need some Allen keys uh, to make that adjustment. I believe there's three different sizes, a 2.5, a two millimeter, and a 1.5 millimeter Allen key. And that's what you're gonna need for all of the adjustments on the possible mounting hardware, the switch, and the arm. Again, there, there are channels that these run in. You can see that we have uh, flexibility here to move this, slide it back and forward. And then the same with the switches. 
if we zoom in, we can see that we have a channel there that the whole housing can actually move in and the switch itself can actually move. But I recommend just moving one of those to try to bring it into position so that it is making with this arm. And I'm going to show you how to I do that real quick. So one thing I want to note is that I did turn off the power. Um, if we do not turn off the power, we cannot move this freely. Um, it will be, uh, you'll find resistance with it when you try to do this. And it's just much easier to, to move this and make contact and adjust with them off, with the machine off itself. Now, using your Allen key, you are able to loosen this adjustment. So if you, let's say that it was adjusted well out of position and you were not able to make contact, you can see that it is touching it, but it is not clicking the switch. So you would loosen it up a little bit, kind of push it back, and you can hear it, it triggering the switch. So at that point, we would adjust accordingly and then tighten it down. And we can hear it making contact now. Also, there are two Allen keys on, or Allen bolts, on the bracket that holds the switch itself. Now we can loosen these and they are channeled and what that means is that once it's loose enough, once it's loose enough, might take a couple turns to loosen it up enough, but this can slide forwards and backwards as well. And we're just trying to make sure that we are reaching this switch. See, so right now it's not. So if I pushed it and pulled this forward a little bit, You can hear when it makes. So I'll, I'll move it just a little bit more and then I will secure it down. So the, the whole point is making it so that that arm on the gantry triggers that switch without any issue. Um, you know, too early could cause a lack of space, too late can make it run into the wall um, and, and almost like it uh, isn't making contact at all. So we just want to make sure that before we run into the back, it is triggering. And then the same for the other ones as well. The adjustments are the same on, on all of them. They're just positioned in different places. And, and that's really it when it comes to uh, adjusting this. As far as replacing it, there are two Allens that hold it on and I'm going to swing it around and I'm going to show you. So if by chance the switch is actually bad, what you're going to do is remove these two screws and then basically just uh, remove the wires off of the one switch and put them on the new switch. These are tiny screws, so uh, figure out exactly where you're going to set them down so you don't lose them. But as we can see here, we have two press-on terminals. Should be very easy to slide them right off. Might have to be a little bit of a contortionist to do it, but you can see they just come right off, come right back on, push right back on, and then we would just mount this back um, to the holder and the adjustment, and that's it. Then we would make sure that we readjust this to make sure that it is making contact since we just replaced it and moved it. Um, and this is if the switch has failed and you have to replace it. And I'm gonna put this one back. And that's it, fairly straightforward. Um, not something that you need to overthink. It is uh, very easy to do, especially the adjustments if we are getting that grinding. 90% uh, of the time, it's just 
the arm or, or something was moved a little bit, so it's not making contact. So super easy to fix and uh, just something that you'll have to inspect from time to time. Okay, I reinstalled my switch. I'm going to move this, make sure it touches. It is triggering. I can move the head over and make sure that that one is triggering as well. And we can watch it from the back side. Okay, so now I'm comfortable with turning it back on and allowing it to home to make sure that we are no longer grinding, uh, that my end stops are making. Confirm and move. All right, it should return to origin like normal. And you're ready to laser again. Hope this helped you out if you're having issues with your end stops. And we'll see you on the next video.